franchise will look like once Sidney Crosby and Evgeny Malkin really are gone? Well, maybe, just maybe, Ron Hextall, Patrick Alvin, and the rest of management wonder as well. Good morning to you. Good Monday morning. I'm Dan Kovacevic of DK Pittsburgh Sports. This is Daily Shot of Penguins. Comes your way bright and early every weekday morning. If you're into football and or baseball, I also offer up Daily Shots of Steelers and Pirates right where you found this. The Penguins did actually, for real, have picks in the NHL draft over the weekend. They didn't pick until 58th overall in the second round, choosing forward Tristan Bros out of Fargo in the USHL. Bros listed as six feet tall, 178 pounds, had 19 goals, 32 assists in 54 games in that league last season. NHL Central Scouting Bureau always surprises me that thing still exists, but it does. It's just a concentration of league officials who make their own list. Not sure why. They rated him the number 28 prospect among all North American skaters, and their characterization of Bros is that he is a player with good speed and hands who's primarily a playmaker. And in watching his footage, that's supported, although I would make an argument that they might be underselling his finishing touch. Uh, he's got some skill. He's got some speed. He's got some shiftiness, and he's got some attacking sense, meaning he's not afraid to take the puck and move into the danger areas, as Mike Sullivan likes to call them, as opposed to just kind of dangling out on the perimeter. He'll work his way to the inside. And that's that's nice. That's good. He might not ever make it to the NHL, but he also might. And if he does, he'll add the one component that this franchise needs to add more than any other at the lower levels. And that is skill. Because it's not currently there. And that should be not a little bit, a lot scary to the people who oversee the Pittsburgh Penguins. Because no, Sid and Gino won't be there forever. And you're only going to get, I don't want to say lucky, but you're only going to get a Jake Gensel, a Brian Rust in later rounds so often. You don't see a whole lot of top six wingers with the type of skill that both Jake and Rust have show up after the first couple of rounds. So that kind of is luck because the Penguins haven't had first-round picks. They didn't have one over the weekend again. Heck, they hardly had any picks at all over the weekend. And this has to change. This has to change. This portion of Daily Shot of Penguins is brought to you by Fubo TV. The monthly cost of cable is over 200 bucks. Fubo TV is just 65 bucks a month for all the same channels, including AT&T, Sportsnet, Pittsburgh. And for a limited time, you can get a seven-day free trial and 15% off your first month by visiting FuboTV.com slash DK. That's right, just for listening to this. FuboTV.com slash DK. You're going to have to take the approach, I think, if you're the Penguins, because they're still not going to have great drafting positions even if they hang on to their picks because it's still going to be a pretty competitive team for as long as Sid and Gino and Latang and everybody else is here. It's still going to be a contending team. That's the way it's being built, and that's what the focus is in the immediate future. It's all still about adding players toward the current team. Nobody's stockpiling prospects or anything of the kind. But you're going to have to keep adding. You're going to have to keep adding skill more than any other trait. I know it's cool over the last two, three years to talk about size and everything else here. The fact of the matter is the teams that have won 
the Stanley Cup, the teams that have been in the finals, the teams that have been in the semifinals, have been predominantly teams that are skilled and deep. Yes, they come with a size component. But skill is the one thing that any hockey scout, any hockey analyst, anyone who is a hockey anything as a lifer will attest it really can't be taught. You either have it or you don't. I know that sounds ridiculous because it's it's not like players can't get better brian rust is actually the golden example of that rust worked on so many different super specific and i mean really specific skill sets the way he would receive a pass on a power play and how quickly he would release it to the next target little passes that he makes to himself to create space for himself uh, yes, you can become more skilled, but the innate portion of it, the sense of creativity, the sense of imagination, scouts will tell you that, that just doesn't, doesn't work its way along later in the process. You either have that or you don't. So if you're the Penguins, this is what you want. You want this type of player... I'm going to repeat, he's not going to floor anybody. He's not super, super fast, which is what you'd want from somebody of his size. And his shot isn't Vladimir Tarasenko's, okay? But he does make things happen. He has that creativity. He has that imagination. He has those intangibles in that context that you really want. Oh, by the way, the kid seems to really have a thing for the penguins it's pretty hard to describe them honestly it's been such a whirlwind of emotions like the entire day and um i'm just really thankful for the penguins organization um draft me um it's pretty pretty funny actually i've uh you know a lot of people might say this but i i truly have since i was a little kid been like a big penguins fan i always loved uh crosby when i was younger so kind of feels uh, a little for full circle um, to be drafted by them. So I'm, I'm just super excited and really thankful. Doesn't exactly make him stand out among young hockey players across North America, does it? Why? Why would you like the Penguins? Because they've got the skilled guys. They've got the skilled guys. And for this franchise to continue to be what it's been for so, so long, for nearly 40 years, what it's represented in hockey gotta start bringing those guys back in gotta start doing it maybe this actually is that start guess we'll find out when we come back just one question Time for just one question, and that's brought to you on this program always by the very good people at the Greater Pittsburgh Community Food Bank, where they are recommitted to serving those in need across western Pennsylvania. When I say recommitted, I'm referring to their recent rebranding, which you can read all about and watch a video all about at pittsburghfoodbank.org. Find out how one dollar from you can be stretched to mean so, so much to those in need. PittsburghFoodBank.org Today's Just One Question comes from Sherry in Wisconsin, and it's an all-timer. She asks, goaltending, that's it. That's the question. (laughs) You know what? It is, though. It is. We can get into all kinds of other drama and everything else that happened in the past week and players who were signed and uh you know trade rumor this and trade rumor that and even the draft itself and the expansion draft and all of it's still coming back to one thing and that is that this roster needs a goaltender to put onto the ice with confidence in game one of the next stanley cup playoffs 
that's it, Sherry. That's really the issue. I mean, I'd still want to see Cody CC sign. I still want to see, you know, some kind of size component added to the team, whether that's internal or whatever. But this really does come down to the one thing. I really liked, past tense, this roster the way it was for the Islanders series. I know that's not a popular view. I know that whenever things go bad, there's a tendency to point fingers all over creation. I didn't see that in that series. I saw a tough, smart, skilled, decently sized team that outplayed its opponent in five out of the six games and lost because of one player. Principally because of one player. You can't, you can't do that. You can't do that. You can't, you can't enter a process like that. And I don't know, if, you know, for all I know, it, because Ron Hextall isn't going to tell anyone, anyone, outside his four walls how he really feels about Jari as a goaltender. He'd have nothing to gain from it, on the record, off the record, in any forum, because he'd be devaluing his own asset. No one does that. It's stupid. But there's no way that after something that hurt like that first round that you don't have a, a, a human in addition to an uh, analytical and executive level reaction to it. You know, that stinks. That stinks. And that, that was that guy's position. Don't forget, you know, Ron Hextall was that guy that his team absolutely could count upon in the playoffs. In fact, he was not only the Flyers' best player in the 1987 Stanley Cup final, he won the Conn Smythe Trophy in a losing cause. And it wasn't even close. That's how great he was in somehow getting that series to seven games when those Flyers didn't belong on the same rink with those Oilers. Amazing, amazing performance. I actually remember it way too vividly. He's going to have to get this done. He is not going to be able to bring this team into training camp and say, yeah, you know what, we really like this guy. We're going to believe in him and we're going to go with him and just see, you know, see how it plays out. Can't do that. Can't do that. Can't do that. Puts a gigantic asterisk over the whole process. Can't do it. Playoffs actually do mean more. I appreciate the question, Sherry. I appreciate everybody listening to Daily Shot of Penguins. We'll do another one of these tomorrow. Hey, everybody. Thanks for listening. Please subscribe to our DK Pittsburgh Sports channel. And don't forget to hit the bell to get notified every time we post a new video or podcast.